Hi guys, in this video we're going to be asking what is fractional distillation? We'll then look at how fractional distillation works and the different fractions before finishing off the video with a summary. If you've watched our video on crude oil, you'll know that crude oil is a mixture of lots of different hydrocarbons, which are molecules that are made up of only carbon and hydrogen. This complex mixture can be split into smaller, simpler mixtures, where each mixture contains similarly sized chains of hydrocarbon. These components of crude oil are known as fractions, and the technique that's used in order to obtain them is fractional distillation. Most of the hydrocarbons that are present within crude oil are alkanes, containing single carbon-carbon bonds, such as the molecules shown here on the left-hand side. These will all be present within crude oil. If we want to separate them out, we use the fact that different lengths of alkanes will have different boiling points, and use an experimental setup known as the fractional distillation column, which is shown on the right-hand side here. Each fraction contains substances that have similar boiling points to each other. Again, if you've seen our video on crude oil, you'll know that the boiling point of an alkane is dependent on the length of its carbon chain, with alkanes with longer carbon chains having higher boiling points than alkanes with shorter carbon chains. Because fractional distillation separates substances by boiling point, the substances within each fraction, which have similar boiling points, will also be similar size to each other. For example, one fraction of crude oil might contain the alkanes ethane and propane, where ethane is the name for an alkane with two carbon atoms and propane is the name for an alkane with three carbon atoms. These will both be contained within one fraction. Because they are a similar size and there will therefore have similar strengths of intermolecular forces between their molecules and this will correspond to a similar boiling point. Similarly, we might expect another fraction to contain the alkanes hexane and heptane, which are the names used for alkanes with six carbons or seven carbons respectively. The length of the carbon chain in hexane and heptane is similar enough that they're likely to be in the same fraction, but it's different enough to that in ethane and propane that there'll be two separate fractions, one with the shorter alkanes and one with the longer alkanes. As we've mentioned, the hydrocarbons with the lowest boiling point are going to be those with the smallest hydrocarbon chains. If we think about a small hydrocarbon such as ethane, which just has two carbon atoms, we can see that the intermolecular forces between molecules are going to be weaker than those between larger alkane molecules such as pentane, which has five carbon atoms. For pentane, there are many more points of contact between any two molecules which leads to much stronger intermolecular forces. Stronger intermolecular forces will require more energy to break, and this will correspond with a higher boiling point. We therefore see that the hydrocarbons with the highest boiling points are those with the longest hydrocarbon chains. This is the key principle behind the fractional distillation experiment. In order to carry out fractional distillation, crude oil is heated until it turns into a vapour. This will require a significant amount of energy. This crude oil vapour is then piped into the bottom of what is known as a fractioning column, as shown in the right hand side of this diagram. The vapour is introduced into the column at the bottom. A fractioning column is heated from the bottom, and is designed so that the bottom of the column is very hot, whereas the top of the column is much cooler. What this means is that as the vapours rise up from the bottom of the column, they will begin to cool. The vapour will rise as it's a gas and wants to expand in order to fill the column. As it does so, it will cool, as it gets further away from the source of heat at the bottom of the column. The temperature difference between the top and the bottom of a fractioning column is significant and designed so that different vapours will condense when they reach the part of the column that is lower than their boiling point. This is because for a substance at a temperature lower than its boiling point, where I've just used the shorthand BP to represent boiling point, the substance will undergo a state change from a gas back to a liquid. This is the opposite process of what happens when we heat a liquid past its boiling point. If we cool a gas below its boiling point, it will condense back into a liquid. Remembering that condense is just the word that we use for the gas to liquid state change. As vapours condense within the fractioning column, they fall onto these trays, which then collect the liquid and channel it out of the column. The important point is that the different components of the crude oil mixture will condense at different temperatures because they'll have different boiling points. The longer chain hydrocarbons will have higher boiling points, as we said on the last slide. This means that they will leave the column as liquids at the bottom. By contrast, the shorter chain hydrocarbons will have lower boiling points, so will leave the column at the top. They will remain as gases at lower temperatures. For example, in this diagram we have introduced crude oil vapour at the bottom of the column. And this is separated out into two distinct fractions. One of the fractions, the one at the bottom, became a liquid at a higher temperature 
than the fraction on the top. If it went through the gas to liquid state change at a higher temperature, it therefore has a higher boiling point, whereas the fraction shown at the top stayed as a gas for longer and has a lower boiling point. Remembering that the boiling point is just the temperature at which the gas and the liquid interchange, and that the fraction column is designed so that it's hottest at the bottom and coolest at the top. From the fact that these fractions have different boiling points, we can therefore say that they are made up of different lengths of hydrocarbon. The fraction with a higher boiling point will be made up of longer chain hydrocarbons, whereas the fraction at the top will be made up of shorter chain hydrocarbons. As we know, because of the relationship between the length of a hydrocarbon chain, the intermolecular forces that exist between molecules of that hydrocarbon and the boiling point of that substance. A fractioning column will be especially designed so that different useful hydrocarbon groups will leave the column at different levels, therefore allowing them to be separated out from the crude oil mixture. As we've said, the temperature of the fractioning column decreases, moving from the bottom of the column to the top. And we've also seen that the length of the hydrocarbon chain of the fraction will decrease. The fraction of crude oil that condenses first, and therefore has the highest boiling point and the longest hydrocarbon chain, is called bitumen, which is a sticky liquid that's used to cover roads and roofs. The next fraction, which has a slightly lower boiling point and therefore slightly shorter hydrocarbon chains, is called fuel oil, and this is used as fuel in large power stations or ships. The next fraction is heating oil, followed by diesel, paraffin and petrol, which again are fuels, with petrol and diesel being used in cars and paraffin being used in lights. The final fraction is what's known as LPG which stands for liquefied petroleum gases. This fraction has the lowest boiling point and therefore contains the shortest chain alkanes, including propane and butane. LPG is the gas you might use in a gas cooker. All of these really useful fractions have been separated from the crude oil mixture, just based on the fact that they will have different boiling points. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing GCSE chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the stat revised smiley face and together let's make GCSE chemistry a walk in the park.